Yes. So you uh, give a correct approach that uh, if you apply force on B, then definitely B will get acceleration, right? And that accelerated B will be treated to be the non-inertial reference for the particle A. And we have discussed it theoretically that a mass whenever in is in contact with a non-inertial reference frame, then only it experience the pseudo force, right? So in that sense, in that sense, it is an absolutely correct approach uh, that pushing the capital M in the rightward direction. You considered this thing that is correct, absolutely. If you apply some force on capital M, which is marked as block B, right? As a result, there will be a resulting acceleration, something a meter per second square must be achieved by the mass B, right? Then what will happen? Now, if you consider this is the mass M of particle A, so obviously once the particle A is found itself in a contact with a non-inertial reference frame, so immediately it will get accelerated, uh, it will receive pseudo force and this will be the pseudo force, right? So this will be suppose small f pseudo force that we can write down m into a. This is the basic idea. As soon as we will apply, as soon as we will apply unbalanced force on B, B will get accelerated, B will be identified as the non-inertial reference frame. The moment it will get accelerated, it will be treated as a non-inertial reference frame. Immediately, small m will experience pseudo force in the backward direction. That is the basic theory. But now, how this pseudo force will be able to stop the sliding motion or sliding possibility of small m? To understand that, if we do the FBD of the mass small m, that is a, quite natural its weight mg that will act vertically downward. If I resolve this mg in two component, I will get the components like this. Geometry wise, this is theta, so this will be theta again. So this component will be mg cos theta. That is the weight component perpendicular to the surface of contact will be mg cos theta. So the component of weight down the inclined plane will be mg sin theta. So that means the mass can slide down the inclined plane with the force of mg sin theta. To stop the mass not to move down the inclined plane, you need to exert some balancing force in the direction upward. Then only you can oppose its downward motion, yes or no. So to do so, if you resolve MA into two components, this MA can be resolved, pseudo force can be resolved in two components. And as per geometry, if this is theta, this can also be theta, right? So this component will be MA cos theta and this side it will be MA sin theta, right? This side it will be MA sin theta, right? Are you understanding it or not? So the moment when the numerical value of this MA cos theta will be equal to MG sin theta, then only the mass small m, that is the block particle A, will be relatively at rest on the surface of capital B, that is capital M, right? So that means to stop the, to stop the sliding motion, to stop the sliding motion of A, sliding motion of A, motion of A on the inclined plane of B, on the inclined plane of B, MA cos theta, the component of the pseudo force that should be equal to the actual force due to which sliding can be possible, that is MG sin theta. Hmm. Which one? No, why it would be uh, capital M? It is the small m receiving the pseudo force, capital M is receiving the external force. You are applying some external force on capital M because of which this valid acceleration is achieved by capital M. So capital M being the first body gets acceleration. So capital M will be treated to be a non-inertial reference frame for small m. So small m will receive the pseudo force on the contact of non-inertial reference, right? So that's why being pseudo force received by small a, so that pseudo force value will be the mass of that object who is receiving it into acceleration. So that's why it is small m into a, right? So small m into a, this is the pseudo force, right? So its component will also be pseudo force, right? 
so that means by nature this is a virtual force pseudo force right and this is real force mg sin theta is a real force so whenever we say that magnitudical balancing of a virtual force against a real force is only possible otherwise if suppose like any approach of external force won't allow that means if you suppose just for an example if you are applying 2 newton and if that is insufficient to reach this condition where ma cos theta and mg sin theta equal that means uh, the condition will not be achieved the condition can only be achieved at a specific resulting acceleration where that acceleration is equal to g tan theta are you getting me or not that means when you apply some external force on capital m which produces a resulting acceleration of g tan theta on capital m then only you can achieve this result are you getting me if suppose an agent applying external force but resulting acceleration is less than g tan theta that too can be a possibility na this is one specific case where the external agent is applying force and that is giving a resulting acceleration on capital m which is g tan theta then this situation this result will be achieved are you getting me or not